from the National Evolutionary Synthesis Center and Understanding Evolution, this is the Evolution in the News story for February 2011. I'm Kristen Jenkins. An illusion is something that leads us to see, feel, or hear something other than what actually exists. We're familiar with many optical illusions, such as this one. The size-weight illusion is one you may not have heard of, but recent research suggests that this illusion, in which larger objects are perceived to be lighter than smaller objects of the same weight, actually plays a role in learning how to throw well. And although we rarely think of throwing as a critical skill outside baseball fields or cricket pitches, throwing overhand is a unique and important human ability. It seems like a small thing, but being able to kill birds or rabbits with stones is one way to be well fed, and bringing down fast, large, and dangerous prey from a distance with a well-thrown spear may have been a key to our ancestors' survival. Dr. Jeffrey Bingham and Dr. Chin Arthur Ju research how people throw objects. They have found the size-weight illusion to be an important part of being able to select an object that can be thrown a long distance. Here, Dr. Bingham describes our unique ability to throw. Well, it's long-distance throwing that is uniquely human, and it is so simply because we're the only species that is able to do this. Other primates are able to throw, but they're not able to throw to the distances that we are. They can throw, you know, out to four, five meters, something like that. We can throw the, to 30 meters. And there's just no other species that can do this. Why is this so unusual? Well, the timing and controlled movement that's required to achieve that kind of distance in a throw is really remarkable. And this is something that really does characterize us. Scientists break down this complicated action for study by using point light displays. Here, light spots are attached to the thrower's joints, shoulders, elbows, wrists, and so on, for filming. Later, the throwing motion can be studied frame by frame for better understanding. By studying displays like this, researchers can learn more about how we throw. Dr. Bingham and Dr. Zhu wanted to know how we know which objects will work best for throwing. I'm an outdoors kind of guy. I love hiking. Uh, and when I was out in the woods with my dad or my sons, a, a fun game when we come upon a body of water is to skip stones on the water. But a related kind of game that played with my boys, which is you're standing on the beach, who can fling the stone the farthest out in the water? And here again, you know, part of the game is picking that ideal stone on the beach. Ah, this is the one that's really going to go, right? I'm going to be able to throw this one farther than anybody else. So the question was, okay, what is it about a stone that's going to make it that optimal stone? It turns out that as the size of the thrown object increases, it needs to be heavier to be thrown as far as a smaller object. Bingham and Jude demonstrated that throwers can identify the best size and weight balls for throwing just by holding the balls. To explore this puzzle, they set up an experiment in which throwers were presented with sets of balls that were the same size but different weights. Throwers selected the best ball to throw from each set and with incredible consistency selected increasingly heavier balls as the size increased. Bingham and Zhu connected this preference to the size-weight illusion. Dr. Zhu explained this connection for us. Size-weight illusion is a robust phenomenon that is exhibited by both children and adults. So basically, if you are given two objects of the same mass but different size, you would feel the smaller objects to be heavier than the larger objects. In other words, for two objects of different size to be felt equally heavy, uh, the larger objects have to weigh more. That's uh, another way to put the size-weight illusion, right? So what we found is when people are selecting the objects for throwing, they always demonstrate the size of illusion pattern, which is for large objects, they tended to select heavy mass as optimal for throwing. As Dr. Zhu mentioned, even toddlers demonstrate this size weight illusion. Dr. Bingham and Dr. Zhu think that this illusion is actually helping us learn to select good objects for throwing. 
The size, weight, illusion seems to be something that we're born with. It's a bias in the perception. And developmentally and through learning, it channels your perceptual learning so that you then acquire the ability to perceive properties that you need to as part of your eco niche. Namely here, properties relevant to the skill of throwing. So is an illusion still an illusion if it actually tells us something useful? Sometimes an interest in science arises from another interest. As Dr. Bingham explained earlier, he came to this research through everyday living, throwing rocks and skipping stones, but finds science an exciting way to address these puzzles. This is the game, yeah, and it's great fun. It's just very exciting. You know, they're very profound problems, but I think we've turned many of them into puzzles, which means we know how to get at them, to learn you know, to probe nature, to get her to reveal her secrets, you know, to find out how things work. Very exciting. Dr. Chu is a world-class badminton player, and his research interests are based on a desire to understand how athletes excel. I think it's really started with a motivation or curiosity, trying to understand how expert performance uh, came from. As a professional or competitive badminton player in China, for a long time before I retire, I'm always wondering, you know, how expert or skilled players are able to, you know, perceive the environment, the sport environment, uh, with so much accuracy, as well as being able to generate the movement that are most appropriate in response to the changing environment. Actually, I'm serving in the coaching education department for USA Badminton. As a coach, I always try to teach students how to throw before I can teach them how to generate efficient overhead strikings. And it really works. It turned out throwing, overarm throwing is a very basic and fundamental skill. Once you acquire it, you can transfer to different uh, sports. For more information about this story, including links to primary and popular literature and classroom resources, visit the National Evolutionary Synthesis Center website or the Understanding Evolution website. More stories are available in the Evolution in the News archives on either site. The National Evolutionary Synthesis Center is funded by the National Science Foundation to promote research in biological evolution.